Good morning, my name is Antoinette Solnick. I'm a registered nurse at Johns Hopkins Sidley Memorial Hospital. And today is the day five of our challenge of 28 days of yoga. Today's practice is going to be a traditional yoga practice and we'll be using just a mat, blocks and a strap today. Again, uh, I look forward to practicing with you. This is a beginner level yoga practice and I hope that we all have a wonderful day five together. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and get us started with our practice. Good to see everybody on, on Zoom. All right, there we go. It's a nice sunny day out, but cold. I think we're kind of at an angle that is um, <laughs> a good angle. All right, yeah, perfect. All right, let's start off in Sukhasana today in our easy posture. It was fun to start off yesterday in standing up and uh, and tomorrow night we'll be at Sibley Hospital. So on Monday nights for those who are uh, are at Sibley um, from five to six, we do that live and in person. So you're welcome to join us. We have equipment that um, is available to you. So you don't have to have a mat or anything and, and that's all there. So just, just know that that's on offer to you as well. Taking a moment though, as we start our practice, to close the eyes if that feels safe to do so, or if it doesn't, just keeping the gaze a few feet out in front of you. Let's take a few moments to take a good breath in and a good breath out. Let a few more people in. We start to go inward in our practice. Relaxing, intensifying the mind, focusing through intent, rooting and connecting. As you breathe in and out, bringing the torso a little higher, you sit the body up tall, you feel the strength and stability of your body. Remembering that all we have to do is to be ourselves, fully and authentically. We don't have to run after anything. We already contain the whole cosmos. We simply return to ourselves through mindfulness, through movement, through breath, and touch the peace and the joy that are already present within and around us. Breathing in, I have arrived. Breathing out, I am enough. Inhaling, I have arrived in this present moment. Breathing out, I am enough. Take a few more natural breaths in and out. Steadiness and ease today. In Sanskrit, we say stira and sukha. We'll talk about that later in the week in more detail. Inhaling and exhaling. Just start to roll the shoulders back and roll the shoulders forward. Opening the eyes now. Yesterday, we did a little head and neck. Let's do that today as we're seated. So this is our neutral as we're facing one another. Take your right ear down toward your right shoulder. Drop that left hand down so you find that nice long line. And then take movement. You could shake your head no toward your right shoulder or just find your way up and back with the, with the head. I'll let somebody else in. And then come back to your neutral and take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, drop that left ear down to the left shoulder. 
right arm comes down and then just start to take a little nod forward and back or no, like toward your left shoulder. You're just stretching here and then come back to your neutral. If it feels okay to do so and you're upright and feel solid, take a look up toward the ceiling and then shake your head now, a little back and forth. Do you feel the back of the skull as it makes contact with the top of the spine? Maybe you hear a little bit of crepitus, a little bit of cracking, right? That's okay. I'm just kind of juicing it out. Come back a little bit and take your chin down towards your chest. A little nod. We're just kind of eliminating any kind of negativity for today. Today is going to be a good day. We're coming back into neutral, back into our neutral phase, taking our hands down behind beside us, and then we're going to reach up and extend on the inhale. So reach up. Do you feel your abdominal core from yesterday? I hope so. I do. I feel the backs of my arms a little bit too. It's wonderful feeling this aliveness of our bodies. Take a circle with your wrist. We're breathing in and breathing out, being conscious of where we're going. <clears throat> Take that right hand down, left arm up. So tend the fingertips of that right hand, reach and extend and circle that left wrist one more time. Draw that left wrist behind you today just a little bit. So you're like, you're opening up saying, hello, left arm. <laughs> and then throw that ball slightly forward. So you feel that maybe from fingertip going all the way down that left hip, come up again as you inhale. Now just head over right to the right side. So just notice that, hug that right elbow in toward the body so you can go a little deeper. And then come on up, let's go to the other side, reach up and extend, inhaling, exhale down that left arm. Rotate that right wrist, open up that right wrist, hello right side of my body. And then throw that right ball forward and over that left knee, feel the right shoulder. Coming up, inhaling, hug that left elbow in toward the body and then just head over toward the left side. We'll do a little kind of more stretching and moving today. Reach up and extend. I want you to have your two blocks for sure. Let's twist over to the left, the right side rather, uh, so that we can come into some lunge poses and be able to stretch a little bit. Have something to pad your knees also so we can be on our knees. Take a good belly breath in and out as you look toward your right side. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out, so letting the belly expand and contract in the twist. Coming up as we inhale, good deep inhale here, rise up. And then let's head over to the left side, right hand to that left knee, left hand right behind us. Good deep inhale and exhale. I'm looking out the window and it looks very cold outside. <laughs> Good deep inhale and exhale. My son's in Vermont though and it's negative 14. Come up and reach up, reach up and extend. He looked like Kenny from South Park when he showed me his picture as he's going out toward uh, to classes. We're reaching and extending with the arms. So W shape them first, open up the chest, Rise up there, now reach and extend. So you really feel the length of the arm. Take a circle of the wrist, or maybe rotate the wrist, your choice. So kind of do what feels good to you, but just take some movement here. And now come in and now push it out. So you're pushing up, ready? Inhaling and exhaling. And you can do it audibly. You can make a funny noise with your mouth. No one can hear you, inhaling and exhaling. That's the beauty of being in your home studio, right? You do whatever you want. Inhaling and exhaling. Okay, really fan out those hands and now draw them in. So remember, we're rounding our backs. Come in, reach up, and then exhale. Come up, reach out. Gratitude for this day. Exhale. Last time, and then come on down. Roll the shoulders back now, and forward. Let's come on to hands and knees and pat our knees with our blanket if you need it. Have your blocks up at the top of your mat. We're gonna use those right away. 
Come into tabletop first, remembering you can bring your forearms to the top of blocks if you would need a little bit of rest on those on the, <clears throat> the wrist. Again, starting off with a few cat cows. So here we go, inhaling as we sway. Now on this first one, notice, you may notice your abdomen that we were just working yesterday. So give it a good stretch as you look up. And then on that exhale, round the back, tent the fingertips and send the shoulder heads up. Take a sway, head over toward the left side first, hold that there so you feel that left hip open up. Sway gently over toward the right side. Oh, that feels good. Now take a little sway like you're a puppy's tail, kind of going back and forth. And we're on our fingertips for a reason, right? This gives us a little bit of strength to the fingertips, the ones that we use for keyboards and all the social media and the working. Now pad the hands, keep that sway going from side to side, back to neutral. We're gonna look over toward our right shoulder, look over toward that right foot. Now, if it feels okay to do so, hinge into that left hip so you kind of just head over toward that left side. Maybe your knees don't allow you to do that, so you just kind of sway over to that left side like we were just doing. Come back to neutral as you inhale. Look over toward that left shoulder. So our navel's back toward our spine, so we're still using our core to do this. And now we're gonna head over to the right side. You kind of land over on your right heel if it feels okay with your knees. Come back to do so. You modify based on your Sunday body or your body in general. Okay, coming back to neutral in our tabletop, cat cows. As we inhale, sway the back. Exhale to round. Keep the hands padded on this one. Inhale, go one scoop and inhale. And then exhale to round. Inhale to sway. And exhale to round. Good deep inhale. Awesome. Exhale, come back to neutral. We're gonna take our blocks, tallest point, bring our right foot forward. That right foot's at 90 degrees. We're framing that right foot with our blocks. We're gonna take our right foot, now one footprint ahead of us, and start to hinge forward on that left knee, left hip. So we've padded our knees. Our blocks are that strength and stability, so we're keeping the body up tall. We're looking forward on in the direction of, uh, of the top of the mat and forward, something non-moving in front of you. Now add to that, squeeze your left buttock now. So feel that left buttock engage as you move forward. And breathe here. See if you're able to get the torso up a little bit taller. You could even, if you're, if you're someone who's a little taller, you could tent your fingertips and then push up a little taller. So you find that height. Now draw that left, that right foot back, that one footprint now, so it's about 90 degrees, and now walk the blocks back so you have them there. We're coming off of our hands now, so reach and extend, arms coming up. So you have that kickstand of that right foot, but squeeze that left butt up one more time. Take a uh, clasp the hands together and steeple chase the fingertips, send them up toward the ceiling. Like you're gonna paint a small circle on the ceiling, paint a small circle. And then go in the opposite direction, just moving here. Now use your core. So inhaling, reach up like you're gonna to touch the ceiling. Let's head over to the right side. Come on up, inhaling. As you exhale, use your core, navel back toward the spine as you head over to the left side. And come on up, good deep inhale, unclasp the hands, take a look up, gratitude for your movement of your body, and then fan the hands down, grab the blocks, draw them back up to frame that right foot. We're tucking the toes of that left foot under, our knees coming off, we're in a lunge. So hands are supported by the blocks. Now, if you need to shimmy that left foot back so you get some distance, go there. If this doesn't feel good to you, then go ahead and you could also put your hands on the seat of a chair so you could be here if you can't get down to the floor. 
So just know that that's available to you. Take a movement now. So go rock back gently onto that left heel, left sole of the foot. So you feel the left calf give a little bit of a stretch. And then come on to the ball of that left foot. Push back and then come forward. As you come forward now, as you're rocking back and forth, squeeze your left butt up. So we have all these opportunities to kind of engage muscle groups side by side. Now we're gonna pad that left foot. So that left foot is now gonna, you might need to hop it forward. Left sole of that left foot is on the mat. Our right hand is on the block. So here we are in the side angle posture. Left hand's gonna come to the left hip and we're now looking toward that left side of the mat or beyond. Reach up and extend with that left arm. So be here. If this isn't good for you and you need to be here with your hand to your top of your thigh, that's fine. Or maybe your hand is on a chair. But reach and extend. See if you're able to open up that left arm just like we were doing when we were seated. And now take that left arm up and over the body. Reach and extend now. So feel the outside edge of that left foot. The energy is traveling up. See if you're able to squeeze your left butt up and then circle the arm over and down. Come back into your lunge, drop that left knee and start to hinge the hips backwards, walk your blocks back. So the blocks are awesome because they take the floor up to you so you don't have to feel wobbly. Here you go. Right heel comes down, right leg is long, our torso is high. Pause here for a moment. Breathe in, breathe out, let the shoulders be relaxed. If it feels good to come over that right leg, go there for a nice stretch. Half Hanuman. Now this is a time for anyone who wants to play around and to go, if you're one of those people that can go into the full splits on this next leg, then do that. So I'm just giving you that offer. I can't do that yet, but one day, hopefully by the end of this month, I'll be able to. I used to be able to. We're gonna come on back as we walk that right foot back. We're gonna tuck the toes of that left foot under again and take our left knee off the mat. We're just stretching here. You might need to shimmy that right foot back. So again, it's at 90 degrees. Just adjust yourself appropriately. We're gonna take that left foot, pat it down now again. We're taking right hand to the block and the left hand to the left hip. We're gonna be coming up into warrior two for just a minute to stretch a little more. Reach up and extend with that left arm. And now push off, so off of that right foot, we're coming up into an upward facing position of warrior two. We're bending that, left, that right knee, our drishti, our view is over the middle fingers of the right hand. We're gonna flip that front palm, keep that front knee bent, flip the front palm and reverse your warrior. Feel that nice stretch along the right side of the body. And then start to straighten that right leg and flex the right foot. Go a little deeper. Take your left hand to your right wrist and see if you're able to extend that right arm a little bit more, almost like you're an archer. And then drop that, take us back into warrior two. Inhaling in, open up the chest here. Take your hands behind your back. If you feel good or grasp the elbows, we're just stretching here. Maybe you take a look up, wiggle your toes so you're not death gripping the mat. Drop that bind, and then we're gonna bring our hands. We're gonna take our left foot, come onto the ball of the foot. We're coming back into our lunge. Everything's really slow and deliberate, so we can get into these postures. Drop your left knee back. We're gonna bring our right foot back to meet our left. We're going over the other side, so you know exactly where we're going now. Left foot's coming forward. Here we go. We're gonna shimmy that left foot forward one footprint and start to hinge forward so we feel that right front hip. Our hands are on the block. 
Bring the torso up high. Breathe here. Squeeze your right buttock nose. So engage that right buttocks muscle. And breathe. Feel that nice stretch along the right hip. So good. Now bring that left foot back, one foot print, walk your blocks back. So we're coming up tall. You just have the blocks there in case you need them. That left foot's at 90 degrees. You could even tense your fingertips on your block and send your torso up a little higher. Breathe here. A good, easy Sunday morning practice. Inhale, rise up. Do a deep inhale here. Clasp the fingertips. Steve will chase the fingers. Again, make that little circle. So when you make that little circle, you have to use the core to make that circle go one direction and then the other. Come on up as you inhale. Exhale over to the left side. Feel that nice stretch. Come on up as you inhale. Exhale over to the right side. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands down to the blocks. <clears throat> Start to walk the blocks back up. Framing that left foot. We're tucking the toes of that right foot under. Come off that right knee. Here we are on that lunge. Come up and back on that right foot. As you come back or forward, depending on how your body is, squeeze your right buttock. So you feel that right side engage. Just coming back up and, up and back on the toes. And now take that right foot so it's parallel to the mat. Left hand comes to the block, coming into that side angle. Remember, you can be here with your hands on your thigh, hands on the block, your choice. We're looking over toward that right side. Reach up and extend with your right arm. So your gaze could be down, your gaze could be up, your gaze could be out. However you are, open up just like you were doing when we were seated. Breathing. And then circle over and down. Come back onto the ball of that right foot. We're back into that lunge. Sink in if that feels good tonight, today. And now take your right knee back down again and start to hinge backwards. We're straightening out that right leg. Heel up, toes up, uh, heel, heel down, toes up. And then again, tenting the fingertips on the block if you need a little height. Even someone as, as short as me, I need to have my fingertips tented. Take a moment to be upright, feel that upright position, and then start to hinge over that outstretched left leg. Feel that nice stretch. So this side's different from the other, right? So see how that feels. But get a good stretch here. Go as deep as it feels good to do so. Walk the blocks back. You might need to take your left foot back just a minute, a, a, a step. Come off that right knee. We're coming back into that lunge. We're going to go into that side angle one more time. So pad your right foot. Right foot's now perpendicular to the left. Left hand's on a block or your thigh. Right hand comes to the hip. Sink into that left leg a little deeper if you can. Reach up and extend with the right arm. As you inhale, come off the hands. Here we are now in warrior two on this other side. So sink into that left knee if it's okay for you. Drishti over the left middle fingers. Open up the chest. Broaden that collarbone. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. So really, Squeeze that back leg. You're not locking it in, but that way you feel that strength and stability of the back leg. Start to straighten out that left leg, flex that left foot, go a little deeper. And then like an archer, so we can gently take our left wrist with our right hand and see if you're able to 
pull that left wrist over just a little bit more. You're just giving yourself a deeper stretch. Now come on back to warrior two. Beautiful transitions. Circle the arms over and down. Come on to the ball of that right foot. You have your hands on your blocks. Right knee is going to come down. Left knee is going to come down. Remove the blocks. Come back into your tabletop. Bring your forearms down. You know where we're going to go. It's that day, that time of the day, right? We're doing it every day. By the end of this thing, we're going to be a powerhouse. So starfish the hands in front of us. The, the elbows are, are shoulder width distance apart. You start to draw the shoulder blade. So it's almost like you're just gently, just a micro inch dragging it toward the midline so that that way you have those elbows right underneath the shoulders and then take the legs out and send the pelvis down. So we're starting off on the ground first. We're just stretching here first. So again, the hands are starfished out in front of us. We're dragging the elbows just a little bit toward the midline and we're bringing our chest, shooting our chest forward. So it's kind of opposing forces, but we're getting that nice stretch in the chest and in the abdomen. Squeeze your buttocks here. Squeeze them and now relax. Shimmy your hips a little bit from side to side and let's do that again. Draw the chest forward. Elbows come toward the chest, squeeze your buttocks. And then relax. Shimmy your hips a little bit back and forth from side to side. Tuck the toes under now of the foot. We're coming up into our plank. So tuck the pelvis under first. And then start to draw the buttocks off and the, the pelvis off the mat. Here you are on your plank. Shift the weight slightly forward. You got this. You're pushing away from the floor. So you're not sinking into the floor. And we're focusing on our breath. If you get bored, remember you could take one foot off and then the other. Eventually we're gonna be walking and doing this anyway, but not until next week. But if you wanted to, you could take one foot off and then the other. Or stay perfectly still and focus on your breath. We're going to breathe in for one. Exhale. Breathe in for two. And exhale. Breathe in for three. You got this. And exhale. Come all the way down. Great job. Come on to your forehead. My head's going to be up so you can hear me. You're taking your elbows out toward the outside part of your mat. We're resting here. Your head is down. Take a moment to shimmy those hips. You did a great job. Take your left foot off the mat. Hold that there and snap. Now pulse it. Pulse it for four and three. You're pointing your toe and two and one. Come on down. Take your right foot off the mat and pulse up for two, four. And two, three, two, and one. Come on down. Flex that left foot now. Draw it off the mat. Hold that there. Pulse that now for four. And three, two, and one. Come on down. Draw that right foot off the mat. Flex that right foot and pulse up for four. And three, two, and one. Come on down. Now we're going to take one foot off and then the other. We're going slowly, like you're doing a flutter kick, except for it's in slow motion. <clears throat> if you get bored, you could point and flex the foot. So just kind of see what feels good to you. Right now, I'm just pointing my feet. My forehead is down on the mat. And I'm breathing so that the neck is long. And we're just making that motion. Now, we're going to play around with Shalambhasana for just a moment. That way, we can start to introduce a new pose, a new yoga pose to your practice. So what we're doing, so let the feet be gentle and soft now. 
We're going to start off with just the feet. There's very there's a lot of different body parts involved in Shalambhasana, so we're just going to start with the feet. Have your feet slightly together so you could maybe even feel your big toes touch. Draw the feet now off the mat. So just the feet are off the mat. Your head is on the mat. Your torso is on the mat. Everything's on the mat. We just have our feet off the mat. Take a good deep inhale in. Squeeze your buttocks as you go. And now come on down. Shimmy the hips so that you don't have any sort of tension in the lower back. And breathe here. We're gonna go one more time. Inhale to raise the feet off the mat, like you're a mermaid's tail, kind of. Take a good deep inhale and squeeze your buttocks so you feel the strength and stability of that back leg and you're using buttock and hamstring rather than using your lower back. But guess what? You're also using your abdominal core. And now bring the feet down, shimmy the hips. We're gonna add the arms and the head just to play around with it, but we're not gonna do that for very long. As we move into our practices together in the coming days, we're gonna come into a full shalambasana. Okay, so for right now, we're gonna kind of fan our hands down and bring them down toward our hips. So we have a hand on either, not our hips, but our, the outside part of our legs, our hands, palms of our hands are on the mat. Your forehead is still down on the mat. So next, what we're going to do is we're drawing our hands off the mat. So your feet are on the mat, your head's on the mat. All we're doing is lifting the palms of our hands off the mat. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together. Your hands are fanned. And you're taking a good deep inhale in and an exhale out. And see if you can lift them up a little bit higher and then bring them down. So we're going to do that one more time. When we go into Shalambhasana, we're gonna be lifting hands and feet off the mat, but our forehead is gonna be on the mat just to start. So again, inhale, draw the hands up, bring the shoulder blades together. See if you can continue to do that with your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. See if you can go a little bit deeper as you keep those hands off the mat. You're sparking your fingertips, taking a good deep inhale in and an exhale out, and then you're coming down. So you're using your own body strength to lift these limbs off the ground. Now we're gonna add to that. You can stay with the hands or stay with the feet, or you can add both hands and feet together. So inhale, take your feet off the mat, feet touching, hands come off the mat, head is down, so you're looking straight down at the mat, your forehead's on the mat, and we're holding this position and we're breathing in and breathing out as we go. See if you're able to draw the shoulder blades together as you continue to breathe in and out, in and out, and then come on down. Let everything relax. We're gonna go one more set, but this time taking our foreheads off the mat. If you can't do that, that's okay. Again, it's little steps. You do what you can do in this moment. So inhale in, take your feet off the mat, start to take the hands off the mat, shoulder blades come together. You're looking down at the floor and then the forehead comes off the mat and you're gonna hold that there as you breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Maybe you're just a half an inch off the mat, it's okay. Continue your breath, you got this, in and out, in and out, and then come on down. Rest one temple on the mat, draw your hands, come back so that your elbows are bent, your hands are right above your, the crown of your head, you're just resting here. You did a great job. That took a lot of body strength, and it's a wonderful way to get really toned. Now. Switch your gaze over so that your right temple or left temple is on the other side. So you're looking in the opposite direction. We're just resting here. That might've been very intense for you. Maybe you never did Shalambhasana before, but this is a wonderful pose to get really toned. Head's gonna come back to the mat. We're dragging our hands now underneath our shoulder blades. We're just stretching. 
We're gonna push the torso up. We're coming into upward facing dog. Take a look forward. So again, we're stretching that upper part of the body, especially, <laughs> and our lower part. You can take a look down toward the mat and look up. So we're just stretching here. And then shift back gently, stay in tabletop. So maybe come back onto your padding. And then we're gonna come into puppy pose or child's pose. So taking the knees out toward the edges of the mat or keeping the hips high, your choice, either sinking the buttocks back toward the heels or sinking the heart low. If you're in child's pose, dragging the hands slightly forward now, and then the forehead comes down to the mat. If you wanna take more of a restful posture, sending the forearms down to the mat, your choice. Walk the fingertips up like you're gonna play the piano and tent the fingertips. Take a little sway from side to side. Really feeling a nice stretch here. And then pad the hands. Let's head over toward the right side. Reach and extend with the left fingertips. Inhaling in, exhaling out. Come back to your neutral, over to the left side. Reach and extend with the right pinky finger. Exhale out. Come back to your neutral, back into tabletop. One more plank before we come up to standing. Lucky us. But this time we're going to be in an upward plank. So again, first make sure that your, your elbows, your, your good shoulder alignment, remember you can go like this, touching your elbows, and then come back. So that that'll give you your good proper alignment. Tuck the toes under, take that left foot out. Squeeze your left butt up, let's stretch here. And then take that right foot out, shift the weight forward slightly, push away from the mat, take your navel back towards your spine, take your buttocks down just slightly so you're not hiking that butt up. Breathe in, breathe out. Start to round the elbows so the elbows are right underneath the shoulders, breathe in. If you need to take a knee down, go there, breathe out. One more good breath in and the knees come down, come off of your wrist. We're on our knees. We're gonna reach up. You did a great job, awesome. Reach up and extend, take a circle with those wrists. Take that right hand down. Rise up, reach up and extend. You know where we're gonna go. Let's head over to the right side for a nice stretch. Oh, that feels so good. Let that right hand travel down. Remember, if you have your block close by, that right hand can come to a block. Just for a stretch. Come on up, both arms coming up. Move that block if you need it. Circle that right wrist. And then head over with your arms over toward the other side. I really like to use my blocks. It helps me get into my postures a little bit deeper. It's a wonderful tool. Come on up, inhaling. And then exhale down. So we're going to come up to standing for some standing postures. Roll your shoulders back and forward. Come up to the top of your mat if you weren't there. In just a minute, we're going to come up together. Going to do a little downward facing dog. And today we're going to add leg lifts to our downward facing dog. You don't have to do that. And remember, if downward facing dog is not in your practice, just come up to stand and stand in Tadasana and wait for us there. Because that motion of just being in Tadasana is just as good. So tucking the toes under, hands are starfish, tuck the toes under. We're gonna draw the hips up, coming into downward facing dog. Move your, your pad if you have it. Let's pedal our feet, sending one heel down and then the other. If you're in Tadasana, do a little bit of stretching just to wait as we come up. If you're in downward facing dog, inhale, lift that left leg up. Hold that there, point and flex that left foot and come down. Inhale, draw that right foot up. 
point and flex and come down. Slowly start to walk the feet up toward the hands. We'll be adding more of that later. Feet are hip width distance apart. We come up to a half lift. Navel back toward the spine, a gentle bend in the knees. We feel the hamstrings. Take your right heel up and then the other. And just stretching the backs of the legs. And then let's slowly roll the body up. Let's start to move together. Inhale to rise, reach and extend. Exhale, hands to prayer, toe touch right foot or draw that right knee up. Fan the toes of that left foot out immediately so you have that nice firm foundation. Inhale, rise up on that left leg and then kick out with your exhale. Hold that for three and two and one. Draw that right knee back, and then we're just kicking back without touching down. Squeeze your right buttock as you go and hold that for three, and two, and one. Draw that right knee back up and hold that there. We're using our core and holding it as we kick out and hold that for three, two, and one. Draw the right knee back, and then kick back and hold that for three, and two, one, last time. Come back up and kick out. Hold that for three, two, and one. Bend the knee, kick back and hold that for three, two, one, and come on down. Reach up, warrior one. Take the left foot over toward the left side of the mat. Right foot's at 45 degrees. Good deep inhale, let's stretch this out now. Take your right hand down, left arm comes up. Bending into that left knee, start to straighten out that left leg, flex that left foot, rise up a little higher and fan that left hand over toward the right side of the mat for a nice stretch, far as you wanna go. Come back up again, start to bend that left knee, take the hands together and steeple chase them up toward the ceiling. Little circle with that, with the fingertip, like you're gonna to touch the ceiling. Go in the opposite direction. Reach up and extend, and then head over to the left side. Extension going all the way down to that right foot. Come on up, unclasp the hands. We're breathing here, good deep inhale here. Gratitude. As we exhale, push off, right foot comes to meet the left, hands come to prayer, immediately over to the other side, inhaling and exhaling into dasana. Inhale to rise. Exhale, hands to prayer. Inhale, come up, left foot comes up to hip height. We challenge ourselves to get it up to hip height, even only in our mind's eye. Bend that left knee and then kick back and hold that for three and two squeeze your left buttock and one come on up left knee comes up kick it out and hold it for three two and one then the left knee so we're using balance if you need to hold on to something that's okay kick back and hold that for three and two and one draw that right left knee up again and kick out and hold that for three, two, one. Bend that left knee and kick back again and hold that for three. Toes down toward the four, two, and one. Touch it down, draw the arms up, reach up and extend, warrior one. Inhaling in, clasp the hands together, exhaling out. Steeple chase and send the fingers up toward the ceiling. Start to draw that circle as you make your breath. Wonderful. And then go in the opposite direction. Find your breath here. Head over with the fingers over toward that right side of the mat for a wonderful stretch. Come on up, inhaling. As we exhale, left foot comes to meet the right, inhaling in. Exhaling in to dasana. That felt good. Inhale, I hope it felt good to you too. Inhale in, reach up and extend. We're gonna exhale forward fold. 
Inhale up to a half lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, roll all the way up to stand. We're gonna do a little stretching here with a straddle stretch, reaching up and extending, inhaling, and exhale, hands to prayer. Grab your block, have it up at the middle point of your mat. We're facing one another. Our feet are wider than hip width distance apart. We're just stretching. So either the block is at the tallest point, or if you have more flexibility, the block is gonna be at its midpoint or lowest point, your choice. So here we go. Tallest point, midpoint, lowest point, right? See how you feel. Make your feet wider than the mat. A gentle bend in the knee. We're using the core strength, right? We're gonna to start to hinge the hips forward. We're just stretching here. Hand comes down to the block or the block or the floor. Maybe you have a lot of flexibility. We're gonna move the block out in front of us a little more in just a minute, but for right now, the block could be even right underneath the feet. Again, a gentle bend in the knee. Maybe you have a wider stance even. We're gonna take a little rock over toward the left side. So we're bending our left knee and straightening our right leg. The block is our strength and stability and brings the floor up to us. We're just stretching here. We're gonna shift the weight over toward the right side. We feel that left inner thigh. Good, deep inhale and exhale. Shift the weight back over toward the left side and flex that right foot. So we need to build in days where we're stretching a little more so that that way we can add in all those other things that we're doing to strengthen. Right foot's gonna come down, we're shifting the weight over to the right side. Left heel's coming down with the toes up. And then we're coming back, both feet are flat on the mat. We're taking the block about a foot or two in front of us and shifting the weight forward. So it's almost like we're in a different kind of downward facing dog. Now see if you're able to, so with your hands out in front of you, are you able to shift your buttocks a little bit back toward the back of the mat and bring the head down? So you're just taking a little stretch here. Shift the weight slightly forward, maybe, and then back. So we're just moving backwards and forwards a little bit. If this is too much, as you, um, you know, and then an up, uh, reverse position, upward facing, downward facing position, then just, uh, just come to like a chair or, or just come up to standing. So we're just moving here. Walk the block back so it's under, so it's underneath the pelvis or maybe just a little bit out in front of you. And we're taking our left hand to the block and our right hand to the hip. So now we're just stretching. Maybe it needs to come back up to its tallest point now, depending on your flexibility. And we're breathing here. Sweep that right hand out toward the side or come all the way up. So you have a rooting down with that left hand and rising up with that right arm, one nice long line, your choice. And then sweep that right hand down, plant it on the block, left hand to the hip, left gaze toward the left side. And then sweep that left hand out or sweep it up toward the ceiling, your choice. We're just stretching here. Left hand's gonna come down. Gentle bend in the knee, so parallel the feet. Gentle bend in the knee, we're rolling the body up. Up to standing. Reach up and extend, we're gonna come into a star pose. So take your feet toward the corners of your mat. Our hands are starfished out, so we look like a giant star. Now we're gonna sit down and goal post. Right, and now, Reach up, come into that X. As you come into that X, squeeze your buttocks. Now come down. When you come up, if you wanna add pelvic floor, you could squeeze the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles and the buttocks. That's a lot, <laughs> but I'm just offering it up to you. Come on up. Maybe you look up. 
and you find gratitude with that raise. Come on down. So much to be grateful for. Reach up and extend. Come on down. Reach up and extend. And come on down. Reach up and extend. And come on down. Hands come to the hips. Just take a little sway from side to side. Breathe here. We're gonna make our way down to the floor. We're gonna use our strap to stretch tonight, today, this morning, not tonight. <laughs> and then we're gonna be coming into Viparita Karani with our legs up the wall or a chair today. So that's what we're gonna be doing in our Shavasana today. Come back into stillness, back into your neutral toe, heel your feet back together so that they come back together. Awesome. Let's come back down to the floor. So back up to the top of the mat so we can get our way down to the floor and get into some stretches and then into Shavasana. Reach up and extend, both arms coming up. Exhale, hands to prayer. And down, sorry. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to prayer. And with our hands in prayer, before we go down to the floor, if you need to get a chair and you don't have a wall close by you, have the chair close to your, to your mat so that you're able to put your legs up. We're all putting our legs up today. Don't have to, but I'm just giving you that offer. If you have a wall close by you, then let's use and access the wall. So just set yourself up for a minute. And then when you come back, we'll make our way down to the floor together. It's gonna to feel really good, I promise. So we're just pausing here for a moment while you get yourself ready. Finding stillness and ease. Stira and Sukha. As we inhale in, let's exhale in Tadasana. Inhale to rise, reach and extend. Tiny back bend and exhale to forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, come all the way down to the floor. Grab your strap, have your blocks close by. Remember, having the blocks like airplane wings on either side of your mat allows us to be able to land our feet on the blocks again bringing the floor up to you when we're doing our stretch with our yoga strap let's come down into our, onto our backs so that we can come into a couple of bridge postures and then stretch find your heels with your fingertips knees or hip width distance apart we're scooping the tailbone up toward the ceiling lower back is flat in the mat Draw the buttocks just a couple of inches off the mat. We're not lifting them all the way up. We're gonna squeeze our buttock and maybe our pelvic floor. And then start to draw the hips up toward the ceiling. Hold that there. Take your left hip one inch up, right hip one inch up, left hip one inch up, right hip one inch up. You're just inching your way up to your tallest point. As you do, you're squeezing that butt up. And then come on down. We're gonna do that all over again. Flatten that lower back. Allow some release. Notice if you're holding any tension in the shoulders. Scoop the lower back. So lower back is on the mat. Tailbone scoops up toward the ceiling. We're drawing the buttocks a couple of inches above the mat. So they're just barely touching. And we're squeezing our buttocks, squeezing our pelvic floor, if you want. So all, again, all that is just offering, right? Once you're doing the Kegel exercise. And then we're gonna start to lift the hips up, draw the hip up one inch, right hip up one inch, left hip up one inch. We're inching our way up as you're climbing a ladder, as you're coming into your bridge posture, and with each one, you're squeezing that muscle group a little bit more to make your way up. Whew. 
pressing in with the soles of the feet, sending the hips up to its tallest point. Take your knees in like you're gonna to touch one another and take the knees out toward the edges of the mat just a little bit. So we're just micro moving the knees in and out. Not enough to harm the knees, but just enough to give the buttocks a little bit more work. And we're breathing as we keep the hips up and gently come on down. Now we're gonna go one more time, then we're gonna stretch. Find the heels, if you traveled, find your heels with your fingertips. Feet again are hip width distance apart. We feel the soles of the feet, wiggle your toes. Sometimes we're death gripping those toes. Scoop the tailbone up so that the lower back is pressed into the mat. Buttocks come off the mat just a little bit and we're gonna squeeze. So you're squeezing and the anal muscles and the pelvic muscles or not. Maybe you're just squeezing just the buttocks muscles. And now we're gonna inch that left hip up, right hip up. So as you do, you're squeezing right buttock and left buttock as you inch your way up toward the ceiling. Continue up as far as you can go. And now we're gonna make some tiny pulses. So we're only an inch down and an inch up. You're making very tiny micro pulses, keeping the buttocks up toward the ceiling. And you're breathing here as you come up and down. Continue that pulse for three, two, and one. Awesome job. Come all the way down gently. Hug your knees in towards your chest. So you should be feeling things, hopefully good things. Hug them in. Remember, if you can't grab your knees, you're grabbing the backs of your thighs. You're taking a little rock back and forth from side to side. Little rock back and forth from side to side. And we're breathing. Breathing in. Come on down with the feet, grab your yoga strap. Let's do some stretching now. It's gonna feel super good. And then we're gonna come into the Purita Karani for our final meditation. Take the strap into the ball of that right foot, send it up toward the ceiling, sole of that right foot on the, on the, on the ceiling. Without locking in that right leg, the shoulders are soft, so your strap is long. And we're pointing, flexing that right foot. Oh, that feels good. Circle that right ankle and breathe here. Find some release in the shoulders, really focusing on that stretch. If you wanna to start to draw that right foot toward the crown of the head to deepen the stretch, that's on offer. Start to straighten out that left leg. Now hover that left leg a couple of inches above the mat and flex your left foot. See if you're able to squeeze your left buttock now as it's lifted off the mat. If you want to add more, take your left hand like you're going to touch your left toes and draw the shoulders off the mat. You're using your core and hold that there for three and two and one. Come on down, leave that left foot off the mat. We're doing that one more time. If you don't want to take your hand, your head off the mat and just keep your back on the mat, you're still getting that good added benefit of taking that left leg off the mat. Let's go. Inhale and reach and exhale. Keep it up for three and two and one. And come on down. Take that left leg down, place it on the mat, start to externally rotate that right leg, take it out toward the right side of the block. My right ankle lands on the block. I've got my Strap in my right hand. I'm T shaking out my left arm. Left shoulder head's resting on the mat, and my gaze goes toward that left outstretched palm. Be kind. Be kind. 
That sign behind me that you see when we're practicing together in my home studio comes from the Infinite Love Project. You can find that on Facebook or on Instagram. And my friends, Eric and Tina, have this foundation where these signs go up all over Maryland, DC, and Virginia. So if you ever see these signs, that's what it's for. And they get no money from this. It's just to spread kindness and the message of kindness around our area. And in this very kind of intense DMV area that we live in, sometimes that message and seeing that message is a wonderful thing to see and remember that we practice kindness daily. And so that's why that's behind me if you're ever wondering, what is that sign about? <laughs> Draw that right foot up toward the ceiling and come all the way across the body. You can catch it, that strap now in your left hand. Left, right foot's gonna come to that left block and we're gonna teach you about that right arm. What's cool about the Be Kind signs is that you can buy a pack of uh, six of them. And then you can, with Eric or Tina, um, or by yourself, go and position them in places around your own neighborhood or own community. And I've done this now. So if you live in the Bethesda area, you'll see them around that I've done. If you're in the Potomac area, um, my friend Rachel has put them there. If you're uh, in Louisiana, we've done them there. Where, where my family is, is from. And, uh, and it's really fun. It's something kind of cool to do as a family or as a friend group uh, because everybody can pick a different location of where they want to place these signs. And they get screwed in with wood screws. You put them on like a telephone pole or, um, and the county totally leaves them up. No one takes them down. It's, um, it's awesome. And we spread kindness wherever we go. So it's just a little message. I get nothing from that other than the fact that it's been really fun to do that as a project with family and friends. Drawing that right foot up toward the ceiling. We're going to take our left foot up to meet the right. Here we are. We're in that V Parita Karani, right? We're in that posture that we're going to be in when we go into Shavasana, except our legs are going to be up the wall or going to be up on a chair. So the legs on the chair would kind of look like this. And then your legs up the wall are going to be like this or like this, depending on your flexibility. Drop that right foot down. We kept the left, less, left leg in a strap. We're going to take a circle of that left ankle. Point and flex the left foot. Draw the left foot up toward the crown of the head. And then externally rotate that left foot. It goes out toward the left side of the body. And don't, I didn't forget this other side, so don't, don't fret. If you wanted to get in a little abdominals, we're coming back shortly. We're just stretching here. Open up that left side. Left leg is going to come up toward the ceiling. Extend that right leg long. So flex your left right foot and squeeze your right buttock. Right hand comes toward that outstretched foot. If you want to keep your head down or up, let's go. Inhale and exhale. Keep that shoulders and head up if you're there. Inhaling and exhaling, squeezing your right leg and buttock. Last time as you inhale in, come up a little higher and exhale out. Keep that right leg up. We're going to go one more time. Just a little bit of uh, Pilates here. Come on up, reach up and extend. Use the core strength as you inhale in and exhale out. One more good deep inhale in <clears throat> and exhale out. Last time. And then come on down. Great job. Take that left foot right over to the other side of the room and land your left 
ankle on a block if that's where you're going. And T-shape out that left arm, take your gaze over toward that left outstretched palm. Now the left shoulder head should be resting on the mat. And if it isn't, then back off. Maybe you're too tight there on that left side, which is okay. Mainly you want to be able to relax that left shoulder. And with the strap, you're just using the strap for support in your right hand. Almost like you're an archer and you're kind of opening up a bow and arrow. That's kind of that, that motion, of what we're doing here in this stretch. The idea here is to straighten out that left leg. So you might not be up to hip height. You might have that left leg way down, depending on your own hip. That's okay. We will all get there together. Breathe in and out. Come on up. Left foot comes up. We're going to remove that strap. Hug the knees in toward the chest. A little rock back and forth from side to side. And then I want you to come up into your inversion of your choice. So V Parita Karani with your legs up the wall. I'm going to tell you how to do that. Or you just bring the backs of the calves onto a chair. But everybody, give it a go today. It's something different. If you're coming up to a wall, we're just sitting next to the wall with your shoulder up to the wall. And then slowly, you're lifting your legs up. So your buttocks are still toward the, like the baseboard of your wall. Or maybe not, depending on how, how uh, much flexibility you have but your feet come up. Take, if you have your, uh, your blanket close by, you can take your blanket and place it kind of underneath the head so that you feel relaxed. You're setting yourself up for your relaxation. We're just going a couple of minutes over. Just take a minute. We've got time here on this Sunday to do that. Set yourself up to really feel relaxed. Cover your body up. So remember, you can take your, your blanket and you can roll it up and then just kind of place it right underneath the neck. And then that gives you a little padding that feels good. You might not need it. So however you arrive in this posture, once you get there, Take a minute to take a breath in and let the chest come up. And as you relax, allow the shoulders to release. Allow the hips to sink in toward the floor. So you're letting gravity do that work as you let the long leg bones kind of sink down into the floor, into the hip sockets. Again, only kind of even it's in your mind's eye, but maybe it's really happening. Just allowing yourself to be in this moment. Feeling the benefits of having moved and breathed. Inhaling to go deep within. Exhaling to connect the body with the earth. Rooting and connecting. Relaxing. Focusing through intent softly. Listening to the words of Kristen Tippett. If we are stretching to live wiser and not just smarter, we will aspire to learn what love means, how it arises and deepens, how it withers and revives, what it looks like as a private good, but also as a common good. 
I long to make this word echo differently in hearts and ears. Not less complicated, but differently so. Love as muscular, not resistant. Love as muscular and resilient. Love is social, not just about how we are intimately, but how we are together, in public, in private. Aspire to a carnal practical love. Eros become civic. not sexual and yet passionate, full-bodied. Because it is the best of which we are capable. Loving is also supremely exacting. Not always, but again and again. Love is something that we master in moments. And it's making that effort with each moment consistently. Staying in stillness. Slowly make some movement to your fingers and to your toes. Point and flex the feet while they're up. Maybe if you were putting your feet on a chair, bring them up toward the ceiling. Make some movement to your hands. And then slowly just roll over to your right or your left side. So you're coming out of that inversion. Cradle your head and your arm. Without moving to get up quickly. And then when you're ready, coming up to a comfortable seat, we finish our practice together. And sitting the body up tall, keeping the eyes closed or the gaze soft. As you sit in Sukhasana, keeping the eyes closed or the gaze right out in front of you, hands can be down in your lap today, maybe just noticing the effects of the practice. Hopefully, calm, peaceful. We'll finish off with the words of Gandhi. Good ones to think about today and in this week as we move through our weeks, and may it be a good one for you. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. As we inhale in, let's exhale and share the word together. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing this day five with me on this Sunday morning. I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful day. And we'll see you all tomorrow at five o'clock for our day six. Look forward to that practice. Namaste. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good practice. Have a great day. Thank today. you so much, Antoinette. Have a great see day. See you tomorrow. Bye. Namaste. See you tomorrow. Let's do this. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.